Uh, I said they got the nose perfect. Yeah. It's really quiet. He doesn't have a nose like that. <laughs> I did. You did. One side. Young girl, get out of my mind. My love for you is way out of line. But you're a young girl. You're much too young girl. I don't know if they were rolling. We were rolling and we're probably going to use this if you allow us. Um, well, I'd like you to start Tell me something about the research. Uh, all the characters are based on very famous uh, existing people. So uh, what kind of research did you do about, about these people, these characters? I'd start with uh, Freud and Young. Maybe Freud uh, because he's uh, older and more famous. Age before beauty. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe in a sense, when you first look at the script, to play uh, Mrs. Jung, or to play uh, Sabina Spielrein, or to play Otto Gross that Vincent played, would be easier. I don't know if that's true, though. I mean, once you get to the set, you have to play with the other actors, and you listen to the director, and it's the same situation as any character. I think that David n never really made it seem like a big deal, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, if you impose it on yourself, that's one thing. But I, I didn't. F I felt like we could have a a good time of it with a really good script and obviously respecting whatever research we'd done as far as the way they walked and talked and the period and everything. But, but in the end you're just playing people and I think that if you're a fan of Freud or you're a fan of Jung you're going to have a lot to like and dislike maybe in this movie but it's not, you know, they're not that different what they were talking about. It was just their their jealousies, their pettiness, you know, in a way, their childishness that that makes it interesting, that makes them different. And that was fun to play. It was, it was, it was interesting to play that. It, they could be anything. They could be plumbers from Uzbekistan. Yeah, well, it's, it's mostly about the relationship. So, so of course, you go to, to the human link between, link or unlinking between the characters. So, Save can us, I get Michael. Jung's take? <laughs> The summer wind. No, uh, um, you know, uh, I mean, anything that I could get my hands on, obviously I did try and read uh, in uh, accordance with the time period that I was allowed in terms of pre-production. But mainly, like uh, Vigo said, I mean, I, I, I just concentrated on the script. Christopher wrote a fantastic script. It was very layered. There was a rhythm to it. It was very dialogue heavy, so I needed to get my head around that. And I needed to understand it as a sort of music piece more than anything, mm -hmm. so the way I looked at it. And um, and then we just came to set and we just started having fun and, and, and riffing and, you know, supporting each other, a, you know, hugely supportive cast, I've got to say. And mm -hmm. then, of course, you've got the master engineer at the helm of it all, you know, Cro uh, David Cronenberg. So I just tried to, you know, as I say, do as much preparation on the script as possible and then allow myself to be free and flexible mm -hmm. on the day when we were filming. Okay. What did, what did you I'd like, like to know something about her role. You're somewhat of an observer. Well, I think you're somewhat of an uh, observer, and but but it, well, it turns out that you actually, you know, don't give up without a fight. So you are a character that at first seems to be like uh, things happening to her, and, uh, and instead it, it's not like that. So uh, well, I think how a lot of what was written about Emma uh, is about her, the work that she did later on in life, and so I think that. A lot of the film focuses on the beginning of yeah. our marriage and relationship. Oh. And That's a cop-out. And, uh, and uh, I just... I right, exactly. And I think, I mean, my father's a psychologist, and so kind of under growing up with a, with a father who is a psychologist mm -hmm. and then understanding the relationship dynamics that naturally kind of occur in a marriage um, when, when you feel like you're, you're married to a man of, of great importance and someone who is responsible mm. for helping others and guiding others and, and at the same time struggling with ideas of transference. I think I kind of already had a lot of, of understanding in a general sense having that kind of family relationship dynamic to begin with. So, of course, that helped. I had no idea. <laughs> still no don't. Help. Can, I, can I give you the... Were you helpful to, was he helpful? You can tell us. Oh yeah, I, I learned so much working with, with both 
with both Michael and Vigo oh, and just right. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> I think more so Michael. Um, <laughs> there, there was a challenge working with him. <laughs> no, but I think each actor kind of brought does something in preparation that I found really interesting, like Michael reading his script. You know, how many times did you read your script before you went to camera? Uh, I think, uh, about, I don't know, 250 times, mm -hmm. roughly. Which, you know, I think is, is was something that I, I definitely took away with me after I finished working with Michael. I read everything 250 times now. I've been reading this 250 but times you now. But you learn I, uh, your lines. Uh, yeah, yeah. But you learn your lines. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I read it, doesn't mean it was going but in. But then but then Vigo would you, you go and you actually spend time in, in the rooms that we'll be shooting in <laughs> and spending time in this space and, and so I think that was really important is understanding a, a spatial relationship with where you're actually working. And so I, I took that away from you for yeah. sure. Everybody has We didn't change it very much. I mean, it's a Chris Christopher Hampton script. It's David Cronenberg directing. Both of them do a lot of work before you start shooting. It's not, I mean, I worked in movies, you guys probably have too, where it's more disorganized. Not that that's bad, where you improvise and change along the way, but this wasn't that sort of story. And because we all had to speak with accents, not our own, and using a kind of language that's outdated, it was better not to make too many changes on the fly, you know? And uh, David's not a big fan of rehearsing, but he's a fan of listening to people and spending time together. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I've always felt with him that he is paying attention at all times, and he may mock you, he may make fun of you, <laughs> but it's lighthearted. I mean, he's engaged with what you're doing. He's obviously doesn't shoot a movie, doesn't direct a movie that he's not passionate about. You could feel from him that he cared about this subject matter and the time period, and that's contagious, you know. I he makes you feel very comfortable. So even though he doesn't want to rehearse, uh, so to speak, he, he'll spend all the time you want. If you have questions for him, he's very open and very informed. It's very difficult to catch him out, I think, <laughs> without a good answer, you know. No, I agree. <laughs> he didn't actually get along very well with David. Don't like him. <laughs> I gotta say, <laughs> just don't like him. The little guy showed up just outside this building. We were walking in, and uh, there was a, uh, somebody standing in the crowd who gave me this. It was very well made, handcrafted, and there is such a thing as doll therapy, and. We've engaged in some of it today already, and I think there'll be a lot more <laughs> as the evening clouds up. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. I think you have to switch places. places. Have you had quite enough. I understand. Thank you. Thank you.